1 Corinthians chapter 13. six and seven love love's way amen well the battle of the sexes man versus woman i don't think that was the way it was supposed to be thought i don't think it was supposed to be a battle am i right no, it wasn't supposed to be. See how for the devil, it's what the devil has done to us. It was evil. It was just, matter of fact, it was complimentary. The purpose of the woman was to be complimentary. Somebody help me. Yes. yes that was, as you later said, the whole human race was embellished. Yes. Oh, help us. Thank y'all. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. Well, somebody, you know, you, you can go online and you can find some of everything, coach. Somebody has several things concerning the differences between men and women. It said men, married men, live longer. Be right now. <laughs> all right. That's all right, isn't it? <laughs> Married men live longer. I didn't say no, brother Green. I, I see several of these guys smiling. <laughs> he live longer. I feel good. Don't you feel good? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you need to stay married. You want to stay around here. Amen. Amen. We got to get, we got to work on Thornton. Amen. Amen. So he can be around here. <laughs> but then in a corner to it, it said, but sometimes. <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> All right, I'll do that next week. <laughs> married men live longer, but married men sometimes are more willing to die. <laughs> That's enough of that. First Corinthians chapter 13 is not about marital relationship only. It works for all. Because before that is, and I learned this, I was telling well, Reverend Palmer and I were talking about marriage and order, and, and, and ladies, and Sister Roberts and I were talking, we do a little meditation every morning, and one item, one of the lessons this, this week, talked about how that women can ponder or ponder those those. Uh, private things, those things that are that are intimate in their heart. We just run through just trampling over them, you know. Yeah, yeah. And 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 in so doing, in so doing, understand more of those intimate things. And you know, intimacy. Let me stop here. Intimacy. If all the time you think of intimacy is doing. Uh, sexual encounter, you missed the whole mark. That's why I say Sister Ralph been married. I told Brother Palm, I said she been married long than I have, because it took me a long while to figure out. Huh? Somebody help me here. Come on, guys. You ladies are far down the road about relationship. Now you may not already have the right picture. And a lot of times you know better, but you'll accept something less than what you ought to. But you are farther down the road about relationship and intimacy. Somebody ought to help me here. And you do not spell intimacy, young people, with S-E-X. If that's all you have in the way of intimacy, 
you don't have much. Amen. You should never marry somebody that you're not friends with. Amen. If you can't be friends, how in the world are you going to be a fool? Help me. This, what Paul has laid out here is the foundation for every kind of relationship. I got to look in. It's, uh, whether it's a business partnership, Reverend Deloney, this works. <laughs> whether it's a courtship, and I mean courtship, Amen. biblical, you know. If you really want to see a real courtship, you need to look at the book of Ruth. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A biblical courtship. Not some of these movie things, though. Ruth. It works in an employee employer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, it works in that kind of relationship. Because somebody has to have godliness in them if it's going to work. Are y'all with me? It works. You cannot have a friendship if you don't have these ingredients. And beginning with, I, we did five last week. We on, on number six. And number six says, the sixth one says, does not behave itself unseemly, or to put it this way, does not behave gracelessly. In the Greek, the same word for grace is also the same as the root word for charm. Y'all didn't hear me. Charm, C-H-A-R-M, yes. Grace, the same word. In other words, we, we have some Christians that are Christian, but they got other attitudes. <laughs> Brutal in their way of doing things. Huh? Somebody ought to help me here. Oh, yeah, they're Christian, but they get so so snappy and, 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 and they're, they're always something. Come on, hit them. Maybe I'm not preaching to the right folks. I don't, it may not be around here. You can be right without being overbearing. Can I get a witness? And what Paul is saying, there ought to be some charm. Come on here and gracefulness in your life. Amen. That great preacher Lightfoot said that of another preacher who had such a radius about it, he said, wherever he goes, his face is going to be a sermon. Yeah, right. Somebody ought to help me here. I don't what do you think? Excuse me. It's all right, y'all. I'm not picking on it. But what do you look like wearing a Christian robe? All right. All right. With a cross on it. All right. An example of being in Christ's army, his choir. Amen. And you sitting there looking like you've been eating, eating raw persimmons. Amen. Who want to be around you? What kind of grace is that? Somebody help me here. Yeah, yeah. It's nothing wrong. Happy Holy Ghost. We're having a smile every now and then. And to speak with people with charm. Because Christians ought to be winsome. I could come in and tell you about the Ten Commandments every time you go. But I need to show you first the Ten Commandments. Can I get a witness? So love ought not to be unseen. In other words, love ought to have some grace, some politeness, some courtesy, some, some tact, some loveliness. Can I get a witness? Help me, Lord. Number seven. Seeketh not her own. Love does not insist upon his own way. 
When it, if love would insist upon its own way, then it means that that would mean that there's nobody else but it. God forbid that love would ever be selfish. God. Oh. John said, God is love. What would God look like being selfish when he already owns everything? Can I get a witness? Am I anywhere? I, 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 am I? Listen, let's, let's, let's just do a little reasoning right here. If God, if love is from God and God is love, what in the world does love look like being selfish? So if you are selfish, help me, Holy Ghost. You must be a step or two away from God. Can I get a witness? Now, I know nobody goes around saying, I'm selfish, I'm selfish. I, but you know what I want you to do? I want you to take the selfish self-test. When you pray, how many eyes are there in there versus them? Somebody ought to help me here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you think about things that are blessed, how many of you see coming your way are going someone else's way? Can I get a witness? Love should never insist upon its way. Would it be friends or would it be marriage or whatever it is? Most of the stuff that we fall out over, yeah. help me, Holy Ghost. If you walked away from it 10 minutes, it'll take care of itself. Yeah. Insisting on you. Number eight is not easily provoked. Ooh. Ooh. This word, this, this Greek word for provoke turns it the other way. It says that love never flies into a temple. <laughs> Nobody right here got a temple. All of my island members done. Never had a temple. I've never seen any temples around here. Mm -mm. Paul, we didn't need this one. We all in good shape. Kipling said that when we lose our temple, we lose everything. You know a kitchen match is a good thing? Somebody help me here. A kitchen match is a good thing. I think the reason why most of the stoves and furnaces and things that are made now, they got their own electronic igniters. They weren't trying to put kitchen matches out of business. Somebody help me here. But you know, Every kitchen match is good for one time. Did y'all hear what I said? And it's beautiful. When it strikes, it makes a big blaze. Somehow. But you got to lose that match head in order to get the blaze. Y'all don't hear me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And once it's gone, it's gone. Can I get a witness? And that's what's happening here when Paul, what Paul is saying. Look. Whenever the temper arises, it flashes. It flashes up. Can I get a witness? But the head's been lost. Because any time you get in a temper, you lose your reasoning. Y'all don't hear me. Yeah, the best thing to do is just go somewhere while the head's still on. Amen. And let me tell you, I told y'all this before. I learned a long time ago, you ain't got no business giving nobody a piece of your mind. Because you ain't got no little piece. You don't have, excuse my English, you don't have but a little piece. Don't you be in no hurry to give somebody else a piece of your mind. I think that's what's wrong now. Some of us that gave all our mind away. Somebody ought to help me. That we, we better get a bucket or something, go around, pick up some of these pieces of mind and give it back to some of them. Can I get a witness? 
No, no, my brothers and sisters. It always, somehow, some way, if it has to go in the next room. Can I get a witness? I heard Dr. Gardner Taylor said, sometimes the difference between divorce and devotion is in the next room.